so much for joining us today for the latest installment of our orchestration monthly. I am Ant-Man on the Agoric team, uh, bringing you in for an another rousing edition. We've got an awesome lineup today. Dean and Roland will talk to us a little bit about what's going on on the Agoric side. And we've got Nana and Milstein from a multi-sig who are going to talk to us about what's going on in Buenos Aires. And Yuri, who's... Uh, Classic Cosmos OG going to talk to us a bit about what's going on in Seoul. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Without further ado, uh, Dean, if you would be so kind, can you please give us just a quick overview and intro to orchestration for those who either would like a refresher or just uh, haven't got up to speed yet? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, modular and interoperability created a world of lots of chains burgeoning all over the place, but you have to manually move your assets among them. So everyone who's seen the, uh, uh, you know, the scenario of I have USDC on ETH and I want staked Tia, or I want liquid staked Tia, or I want a new NFT on the, the most recent release of stars. Orchestration is the, uh, is software that can, shuffle that, that can manage those assets for you so instead of having to manually walk tokens across chains instead of having to manually rebalance positions from osmosis to ass report and vice versa you can have smart contracts on agoric that can do that for you they it provides the simple programming in this new world of massive numbers of chains and asynchronous access and all that sort of stuff to make it easy to build those interesting cross-chain abstractions so you know, so modular made this world, and now orchestration is going to help you uh, uh, manage it. <laughs> well, when you put it that way, who wouldn't be interested, right? Um, I mean, that definitely sounds really exciting. I want everything to be much, much easier. Um, I really love the example that you've used in your talk a few times uh, with DoorDash. Uh, how how does that uh, how does that relate to all of this? <laughs> okay, that's so, that's my favorite part. All right, I'm going to call out Chris Bernisky. Um, <laughs> I, I was explaining this to Chris Bernisky, um, uh, uh, and you know he 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 is really great at 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 focusing on the well you know how does this matter to users how does this make you know how does this make a difference to millions of users being able to come to crypto? He was saying in Web two I don't see orchestration as a hard problem right I don't see this problem you're talking about of of you know of uh, uh, cat herding you know wrangling all these asynchronously available services, um, and the reason is that orchestration has succeeded in Web two right trillions of dollars of every every day of, of transactions are controlled by JavaScript programs in Salesforce and Bloomberg terminals and so forth running across multiple systems so DoorDash is you know how many people when they've ordered a hamburger in you know in in DoorDash or ordered a ride in Uber, thought about, well, gee, I wonder if they're running on Google Cloud or Amazon, because I can only use Amazon apps. And so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, you know, and some of the restaurants use Google, so I can't get them in DoorDash. No one does that. That's crazy. I push button and I want my hamburger to show up. And so, so orchestration, and you also hear the term chain abstraction. Chain abstraction is that cross-industry narrative that is growing for exactly this. Users want access to underlying assets and services independent of the underlying chain. And orchestration is now how we implement that so that we can give that, you know, that push button, get my TIA, you know, push button, uh, rebalance my portfolio, push button, um, get a ticket on one thing and sell it on another service that happens to be on a different chain. I don't care. I'm just trying to sell my event ticket, right? And that's amazing. So who really would you say is like the primary um, group who are going to benefit, in, you know, in the short term, especially when we say like once the orchestration API is launched? Oh, my gosh. Uh, so so um, the first thing is is Web3 developers that are building uh, applications that cross chains. Right. We've got this new way. You know, we, there's sort of three categories. Right. There's there's. Um, uh, people that have existing services that they would like to extend them or make them access accessible or build some use case for their existing service that happens to cross chains, right? The, where their service is more powerful if they can just pay for it from, you know, with transact, you know, money from ETH or where if they could just take their NFT service and make it work for NFTs that come from Omniflix and Stargaze, right? 
Um, so it's valuable for people who already have something, even if it's on other chains. The second is people like Calypso that are building a brand new use case that spans chains. A portfolio manager that just works on osmosis is not useful. You want to be able to have positions there and positions on UMI and positions on Astroport and positions on, you know, in, in, on, on Ethereum services and positions in Solana and have it all roll up and be able to move some assets from something that happens to be on Solana over to something that happens to be on, on osmosis and have it all just work. Right. And so, you know, the, the, the integration of those of Solana and ETH is a later stage, but that's what an orchestration API gives you. So that's the second category. And then the third category is clearly just going to be end users. And by, 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 by um, you know, as a result of being able to get non-crypto end users, giving them that simple solution that spans multiple chains, that's one of the, what people are realizing is a requirement to, um, uh, to, to, for, for crypto to take off in the mainstream is we've got to deliver solutions that end users care about and they don't care about our tribes. They care about, you know, push button, you know, get this investment position. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely what I care about um, as, as, an, as an end user for a lot of these products. Um, you, speci you specifically mentioned the orchestration API, and I mean, I think that is as good of a reason as any to pick on Roland for a little bit and uh, call him up here. Um, so, Hey, Ant-Man, how are you doing? Hey, Roland. <laughs> hey, Roland. Uh, so uh, I know we you know we recently we just had a, a, the upgrade fourteen go live on chain. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just quickly, uh, sort of what happened with upgrade fourteen? Uh, what's coming in upgrade fifteen? And basically, how do these relate to the upcoming API? Yeah, um, uh, appreciate the question. So I, I think I might take this a slightly different way and answer your question in a more roundabout way, if that's all right. Um, well, of you know, back in. Back at the end of March, I sort of posted a, a long thread around what are the efforts that, that Agoric is working on. Um, and so I, I imagine some folks on the call have seen that and some haven't. Um, the, the, the core way to think about our, our efforts on the engineering and product side right now is it all basically adds up to the, the release of the orchestration APIs. And you can think of that as the APIs themselves the platform upgrades needed to allow JavaScript smart contracts to talk to underlying IBC and, and chain level calls to, to be able to do the, the kinds of cross chain operations we want. Um, and documentation, sample code, example example um, contracts and dApps that, that sort of showcase all of that. And so all of that is coming together somewhat simultaneously. Um, you know, obviously some dependencies there, but a lot of it is, is being worked on in parallel. Um, on the, as you mentioned, Ant-Man upgrade 14 uh, just went out and that from the perspective of how it gets us closer to orchestration, that had important key bumps to our interchain stack. So uh, new versions of the Cosmos SDK, uh, I think we moved to IBC V6. Um, and so that gets us closer to part of the platform capabilities that we need. Um, we also are nearing, and I, I, I believe we're sort of nearing code complete on planned uh, work for upgrade 15, which also sort of further sh improves our platform and importantly would include uh, what we're calling uh, the vTransfer module, which is effectively how, how Agoric Smart Contracts talk to IBC. So big, big important platform upgrade there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm underselling a bunch of work that, that engineering is also doing uh, beneath the hood that is probably less visible to users, but um, there's a lot of work there around ensuring the Agoric platform is uh, robust, upgradable, and, and all that, uh, which is in part of these upgrades as well. Um, from the orchestration API standpoint, that is coming together too. And actually we just got, we're sort of at the stage of just sharing this with uh, friendly partners that are building orchestration related applications on Agoric already um, and getting their feedback on the ergonomics of the API, how that how things function, are we missing pieces that they would expect? Um, and so that, that process is going well. We've got probably another week of that before we start sharing it a little bit more widely. Um, and then, you know, I, I, we're largely tracking towards sort of end of April, early May on, on the orchestration APIs. So all of this is, you know, actively being worked on and uh, feeling good as it's coming together. Um, I know we've got a bunch of other speakers, so I'll, I'll end there, but happy to take questions. Uh, yeah, Roland, before you uh, completely, completely tune out, just last question, um, uh, real quick, uh, any updates around Calypso? 
Ah, yes. Uh, and, and so I don't want to give updates for the Calypso team. Uh, you know, I, they are the, the primary reference application using the orchestration APIs. Uh, we meet with them weekly on, on status, and, and they've been heavily involved also in, in sort of working with us on, for example, the vTransfer module. Um, I don't, I don't want to give a, a status update for them. I think they are tracking alongside us, um, and as, as we're coming together, they are coming together. So um, I, I think the short answer there is no. I, I want to make sure they, they speak for themselves on the marketing side, but um, oh. I can say that we're all super, super excited uh, for the Calypso launch. I can give the one update that I got, which is it's spring break week. I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> I bet that is true. Yeah. No, I know. And, and if anybody deserves a break, uh, it's those guys. Although I, I kind of think we do too, but the, we, I don't get to go on spring break anymore. So. No, Roland, you gave that up a long time ago. But awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, for the product update. If you have any other, um, if anyone listening wants to go a little bit more into Roland's update, I did drop uh, his latest product and engineering uh, update thread as a reply to the uh, Twitter space here. So uh, feel free to peruse that and you can always drop questions on uh, Discord or in the, the Agora community forum. Those are great places to, um, you know, to reach out and interact with the team. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that being said, you know, now that we've kind of talked a little bit about some of the updates that we have on the orchestration side from uh, from Opco, um, let's turn our attention outwards a little bit and really, uh, you know, connect with people who were sort of at part of the larger Cosmos ecosystem, the IBC ecosystem, because as you know, like the orchestration and uh, the product that we're building is a very, very outward focused product, um, you know, and in particular, Dean, you just came back from Seoul. So uh, I'm going to talk to uh, Dean, uh, Yuri, and Nina a little bit about um, Seoul, Buenos Aires, what's going on. Let's start, uh, Dean, uh, how was uh, how was Seoul? You had, you were on a panel with, uh, with Vitalik, Ilya, <laughs> and Adrian, right? I, I was, yes, yeah, it was awesome. Um, so, well, first we had uh, Chain Abstraction Day. So we've had uh, um, co-sponsored Chain Abstraction Day with uh, Flashbots and Near in East Denver, where we first talked about orchestration as how you achieve chain abstraction, right? How you achieve those simple user experiences. And so um, there's a you know there's a sequence of these across the year. The second one was in was in Seoul, so we first did that, and I presented you know more examples of as the as the API evolves of of how one builds with it, and you know to a new audience. Korea was awesome, right? It's a small, uh, relatively small, less chaotic event where people actually spend a lot of time talking to each other. It takes enough work to get there that people you know are really paying attention. And the number of people that got it responded positively have have applications that they are now building that they would not have been building a year ago where they're struggling to achieve them and the orchestration API looks like it'll it'll address it. That was just great. Um, for the, the 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 panel then at um, at Crypto Soul and Erica King, uh, you know, always runs awesome events and 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 so there it was, um, you know, myself, uh, uh, Vitalik. Uh, Ilya and Adrian um, from uh, uh, Anoma, um, all talking about chain abstraction with Zucky Munyan, um, uh, shall we say, orchestrating the conversation. And so we spent, you know, 20, 30 minutes before the time, before uh, the panel, talking about our different perspectives, how it relates to account abstraction, which Vitalik has been on for a long time, and how the how it relates to what crypto needs to do going forward uh, in order to get the the broader utility, broader deployment, and broader adoption. And so it was really nice to just sort of align on a lot of those core values and directions. And it goes back to, you know, this is not just about Agoric, it's not just about uh, Cosmos and the interchain. It's about these use cases that really do span ecosystems and 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 and, um, and everyone was on board with that, right? Everyone was feeling like indeed this is an important element going forward. And so you know that that whole Chain abstraction and orchestration, um, you know, it fits. It fits. It it you know resonates with what what um, you know with what all of their top concerns are. And we have different cuts at it. And the nice thing is they all fit well together, right? You know, the 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 stuff that Anoma is bringing for zero knowledge or for um, uh, in order to have shielded pools that will fit well with assets that then go into an orchestration program, uh, an orchestration contract written on Agoric to drive some interesting cross-chain economic uh, process from shielded assets. You know, this is, it, similarly, the, 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 the um, 
account signature work that NEAR is rolling out will be able to make use of. And, and uh, Ilya and I talked about, um, you know, at what point do we make sure our two chains talk and we can do cross-chain orchestration uh, between um, uh, uh, Agoric and the rest of the cosmos and NEAR. And that, that sort of stuff will, will, will happen over the next, uh, over the rest of the year. So, so it, was, it was great to have the panel, but it was especially great to sort of have that, um, you know, backbone of conversation and alignment um, across these several different ecosystems. I mean, that's amazing to hear, and it sort of echoes a lot of the sentiment that we saw in uh, ETH Denver that uh, Cosmos in general had a really positive uh, reception and uh, you know, everyone was really excited and kind of aligned. Um, you know, uh, we also, uh, Yuri, would love to hear about uh, Cosmos Soul because that was another uh, big event right around the same time. And there were a lot of great speakers there. And, uh, you know, I know just from what we heard internally, there were good conversations going there. So, um, Yuri, if you could uh, come on up, we'd love to hear your perspective as well about, um, you know, some of your os observations about the Cosmos ecosystem in the area. Yeah, sure thing. And um, thank you for having me. Can you hear me all right? Yep, loud and clear. Perfect, thank you. So yeah, again, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, Cosmos All was great. The entire <clears throat> Biddle week was uh, amazing. Uh, I wasn't uh, able to make it to Biddle Asia, but made it to Esol. And as uh, Dean mentioned, um, Erica is really throwing amazing events in the industry. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I think because I also attended East Denver, the outcome was like very similar to Denver. People are very excited about the interchain the interchain tech stack uh, specifically because everyone is using the cosmos sdk nowadays but also specifically ibc and we also had um, a panel at the uh, cosmos soul how interoperability relays the groundwork uh, for abstraction i think this really also is reflecting in the narrative that agoric is building with orchestration and abstraction that people do not really care about you know what is happening behind the scenes. They just want applications to work. And we have like so many different applications across so many chains and people just want them to work. And with interoperability in the background that it just generally works, now the next step is really to abstract this, um, to really abstract this uh, user experience so that you do not realize that you, that you don't recognize that you are on one chain or that you're on another chain, it just works. So you can orchestrate, as this Dean mentioned, that you can orchestrate between these, uh, these different chains. I think this is something, uh, yeah, that was like missing for the for the past years, and now we finally see this uh, becoming a reality. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, based on the conversations you had, Yuri, with people around uh, uh, Cosmos Soul, and you know, uh, well, one, I'd love to hear from your perspective, like, you know, just generally, was was that? Did you find that event to be successful? And based on the conversations you had with people um, in Soul, you know, what do you think the opportunities are there uh, to really help the ecosystem grow? So your uh, question was like on how the event was and what people think is necessary to let the ecosystem grow, correct? Sorry, I lost you for a second. What was the beginning of that? I, I just asked for the question again because I also lost you. Uh, <laughs> maybe my internet connection is not that strong. Okay, so... Um, that was from your perspective, was Cosmos Soul a successful event? And based on conversations you had with people while you were in Soul, what do you think the opportunities are to help the ecosystem grow there? Ah, yeah, all right. Um, yeah, I think uh, Cosmos Soul was a was a great event. It was like uh, to it it uh, it was also towards the end of the uh, of the conference uh, of the conference week. And yeah, we had a lot of uh, Korean people on the ground, lots of uh, local people that uh, were just interested how to use the Cosmos stack. And um, yeah, people were very curious about it. We also had uh, Ilya there from from near. Uh, we briefly also chatted about uh, abstraction. So yeah, everyone is talking about abstraction and interoperability nowadays. And this was like really reflected at uh, Cosmos Soul. And uh, yeah, people like really try to, you know, dive, uh, dive deeper there. So uh, definitely this was like uh, a great event. And yeah, um, sorry, I missed your, uh, what was the second question? I'm so sorry. Yeah. No worries. Um, do you think there are opportunities to help the Cosmos ecosystem grow in Seoul? 100%. Yeah, the uh, Korean crypto community is really on fire. 
Um, sometimes there's a language barrier, to be very honest, but people like Erica do a great job in translating uh, translating everything. We see lots of uh, documents that are being translated into Korean. And the talent pool of people is like extremely large and the interest in crypto is also big, like much bigger than I've uh, expected. So I think for interchain, for like interchain applications, there's like um, a big opportunity in basically abstracting all of the uh, all of the uh, uh, interactions that you can do in the interchain in terms of trading specifically. So trading, investing, uh, DeFi activities, staking. So I think there's like a big opportunity because the people are just so interested in diving deeper and really use those applications. So I was very surprised how big all of the uh, centralized exchanges, for example, um, like how much traction they get uh, from the Korean community. So yeah, I think there are a lot of um, opportunities, but I would say since the US is getting a little bit more tricky with uh, with, with regulations, um, yeah, we get a lot of attention from Southeast Asia generally, like that this is the market, Asia, Southeast Asia, Japan, where yeah, the interchain can do a lot of good work. Um, really, uh, and really interesting, uh, insight for sure. Um, and just, you know, just to follow on from that, um, you know, we, the Agoric team who was over in Seoul had really interesting conversations with different builders and community members, uh, in that area, which, you know, we were all really, really happy and we had great feedback from, uh, everyone who, uh, who had these conversations. Um, and, you know, we're, we're exploring working with an advocate and a technical advocate there to help expand the community further, both, you know, the people interested in Agoric or working with the IBC stack and the orchestration API, as well as the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, and, you know, we, you know, we had uh, Agoric hosted an event at the beginning of uh, Biddle Week and it was a really, it went really well. So we're, we are exploring a meetup in Seoul as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, keep, you know, keep, uh, stay tuned to our social media channels to hear what we got going on cooking down there. Um, but, you know, speaking of meetups, we do have an upcoming meetup in Buenos Aires and coincidentally, although not really coincidentally, we have uh, Nena and Milstein here from La Multisig who have been uh, amazing partners working with us in, um, well, actually, we got to meet them in Denver as well, too. So, I mean, thank you guys for being part of the Agoric family all around the world. And I'd love to now bring you guys up to talk a little bit about uh, Buenos Aires, Latin America and what we got going on down there. Um, you know, in particular, um, you know, uh, I don't, whoever wants to take this first or uh, maybe Milstein, why don't you get, start us off? Like, tell us a little bit about what does the development landscape look like in Buenos Aires? Are there a lot of crypto developers or is it a, is it a hot spot? Hi guys, hello. Thank you for having me here. Um, regarding your your question about developers here in in Buenos Aires, yes, it's we have a very big community here. Um, this is because in first place because we have a very good education system, and so people can access to study um, system engineer careers. And, and other and kind of careers that are related to software development. And also because the, 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 the great inflation, the high inflation we have here and the economical crisis, that, that push a lot of people and to work in software development because they can and give services and to, to international uh, companies, and also because the it's not only the software side; it's also the crypto side, the web three side, which is very big here, and because of the of the political and economical situation we are living. And when you have two hundred percent inflation in one year. And your currency, your your the, the, which the government is, you you are obligated to use it, and but you have uh, other alternatives that you can access like Bitcoin, like like stable coins. Well, it's a no brainer to jump uh, into the rabbit hole of Web three, and and not only use it as as, as a user, and also start to creating and building good stuff and for for 
for everyone. So yeah, the the ecosystem here is in in terms of developers is very big. Um, yeah, that's amazing. Um, just before we continue, looking at the time real quick, uh, you know, we were only scheduled for the two more minutes, but um, uh, Nana and Milstein, do you have a, a hard stop in two minutes or can you chat for a few more minutes just so we can really hear from you for a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, th uh, thank you so much. I uh, appreciate that. Um, you know, uh, I would love to hear a, a little bit more, you know, I mean, Buenos Aires, it's, uh, it's, you know, part of the OG crypto community. There's always been a really active uh, community down there, which is awesome. Um, you know, we had our first event uh, earlier this year, and we're potentially thinking about another one coming up soon. I don't want to spoil it, but I'll talk about that. But um, you know, what uh, like what opportunities do you think there are for like the Cosmos ecosystem to really start to expand its footprint? You know, in in Buenos Aires and to connect with the developer community there. Oh, I can take that on. So. I think that um, Buenos Aires has always have Buenos Aires and Argentina in general, as Milstein was saying, has a need for crypto, which is completely different to most of the different audiences in, around the world. So for other people, like in the U.S., um, they have the need of they they don't have the need. They just they, they're just interested and they like it. However, um, in Latam, for example, you actually have the need. Um, so I see that there is many opportunities there because we not only have users, active users that are interested and that are going to use the products that you give them as long as they are good and have a use case, but also we have, as Milstein was saying, a lot of developers. So I think that it's just something very unique there, a good combination where you can have both, the best of both worlds. And I think that Cosmos has a lot of potential to grow there. Um, we have been actually doing like content and events for, since 2021. And most of the users were based in Ethereum and then Polkadot because they, they just got there and they made an incredible job in community building. Um, but really the technology that Cosmos has, it's, it's just so good. So like now, the, the last couple of months, we've been having a lot of interest in Cosmos and we have been trying to push it a lot, uh, but the interest was not there. But since the, um, the TIR drop, that kind of awakened the curiosity of people to actually look into Cosmos and to say like, okay, how can I build here? And what can I do? And I'm, I just, I don't know, like I, I feel that it's going to be really interesting to get together and not only find the users, but actually do what you guys are doing. That is go to the developers because the applications and the different use cases that they have are very unique. They don't build architecture per se. They they build things that they need and that brings immediately a lot of users. Wow, I don't, how do I follow up? How do I follow up with that? Um, yeah, that's tough. But I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing to hear. And, you know, it does kind of echo a lot of the sentiment about why we think the or why we, it seems to us, or at least to me, why the Cosmos community and the Cosmos tech is really starting to uh, catch people's eyes. Um, you know, uh, thank, I want to thank everyone. I don't want to impose on people's time too long. So thank you, everyone, for coming out and for joining us. Um, thank you to our guests um, to Yuri, to uh, Milstein, to Nena for coming and talking to us about all the, the events that you've ran, the communities you're helping build. Um, Dean, thank you so much for sharing a bit about what happened in Seoul and your experiences there and for that awesome orchestration overview. Um, Roland, thank you for following the script that we wrote for you. I'm kidding. Roland, thank you for the update on the product. We always appreciate your insights there. Check out his thread if you have any other questions. Uh, we do have a handful of upcoming events on the Agoric side coming up around the world. Um, the next orchestration monthly call will be in May, uh, where we're going to get a chance to talk to some more advocates for our, from our global community. Plus, we'll have some product updates for you um, and some other exciting guests. So stay tuned for more info on that. Um, in April this month, we do have a meetup coming up with our wonderful, wonderful guests from La Multisig coming up on April 16th in Buenos Aires. Um, and we also will be in Dubai for Token 2049. So feel free to reach out, find out uh, which of our team members are going to be there. 
uh, in May in Austin will uh, be in uh, a consensus. We're planning an abstraction event as well. Oh, and uh, Cosmos Dubai coming up is also in April. Sorry, I put that on the May line. Sorry, Yuri, but that's coming up uh, in uh, in April as well. Austin in May will be a consensus. And uh, in July, we're planning to be in Brussels for ETCC, uh, Chain Abstraction Day Brussels and Nebular. So yeah, the Agoric team, we're going to be all over the place learn, talking about orchestration, talking about chain abstraction, talking about how IBC is going to eat the world. Make sure you get a front row seat. So follow us on Twitter and check out our Agoric events page if you want to stay up to date on all of our meetups. Thank you everyone for joining. Reach out to us on Twitter if you have any other questions. Join the Discord and we'll see you next month for the Orchestration Monthly in May. You can all sign off now. I'm not allowed to sign off until everyone else leaves. But thank you.